seeing all of these in front of me, I don't know exactly that I would say that this is $150 of Lego. Hello, happy people. Today, I wanted to talk to you about the Flying Ford Anglia, Hedwig on Four Privet Drive, the Forbidden Forest Magical Creatures, the Hogwarts Castle Boathouse, and the Hogwarts Castle Ellery. The rest of the Harry Potter sets that have come out this year so far. There's also the set of five brickheads, but I have not built those yet. And honestly, a brickhead is a brickhead, right? Like, do we really need to talk about it? Let me know in the comments if you want me to talk about it though. Thanks so much to the Lego Group for sending me three of the five sets that I'm reviewing today. All thoughts and opinions are my own. I'll be completely honest with you guys, I was not gonna make this video, but on release day, if you saw my vlog, I got the four Privet Drive Hedwig and then I got the Boathouse and I realized I had a lot of things to say about those two sets and then I figured why not, let's just talk about all of them, right? So we're gonna start with the Flying Fort Anglia. This Lego set has 165 pieces and retails for $14.99 USD. So this is the first time we are getting the Ford Anglia on its own. We've previously seen it on Escape from Privet Drive. I think that was in 2002 in the Hogwarts Express from 2008 or so in the Hogwarts Whomping Willow that was a little more recent and then finally in the four privet drive set I was a really big fan of this set I love that you can finally get this on its own even before I knew I was getting this from Lan I had this on my wish list I was like this is a set that I'm gonna want because I didn't have a Ford Anglia car in my collection yet it is a six stud wide build I don't know if you do Lego cars you probably know what that means but everybody keeps asking me like how many sets how many sets wide and I'm just like I, I guess six is that normal for like if you're doing a Lego city I really don't know so this is six studs wide. There is a brand new Lego piece and if you can see it right here it's like this double cheese slope or you know like the cheese slope that's a single but it's like twice as long. It's very cool looking and I didn't realize when I was building it that it was a new piece. I just thought like oh it's so pretty and like the blue is also really pretty. The set came with three stickers. Two of them were the front and back license plates and then I think the other sticker is like the inside not the steering wheel but the passenger side of it. I'm a really big fan of this Lego set. Like looking at the previous iterations of this car I think it's only gotten better. I don't see how it could get any better than this unless you made it bigger. That's what she said. In this Lego set, we get Ronald Weasley so with his scared face and then his second face is a happy one. We get a Harry Potter, of course, with his scared face and then his normal face. We get another beautiful Hedwig owl. There's actually a spot in the back seat just for her. And what I really love about this set is that on the inside can fit Harry and Ron comfortably side by side on the inside. I feel like not all of the previous iterations have been able to fit them both comfortably in there. The roof comes off pretty easily if you wanted to remove the figures. There's nothing going on in the front under the hood, but in the trunk, however, it does open up and you can fit in Harry's luggage and you can put Scabbers back there too, because seriously, Scabbers is garbage. I mean, for the price point, two mini figures, an owl, a rat, a really cool looking Lego set, $15. I feel like you could just throw that into your cart and it's just a really great value. Now let's talk about Hedwig at Four Privet Drive. This set is 337 pieces and will retail you $19.99 USD. This is another one that before I knew I was getting some of the Harry Potter wave, I was like, I'm I'm gonna buy this one. And then, you know, it turns out that I didn't get this sent to me by the Lego Ambassador Network. So I did go out and buy this one because I really wanted it because it's so cute. There's six stickers. One of them is here on the top of the trunk. One of them is in this picture frame that you can place inside the trunk. And one of them is on this brick that says history of magic that you can also place in the trunk. And then the last two are the ones on the sign itself, Privet Drive. Oh, and then I missed another sticker, which is right here on this curved slope on Hedwig's chest. So it's just like to add some texture. I'm never the biggest fan of white stickers. So white stickers on white bricks. This is very noticeable on like Star Wars ships, on Star Wars droids. It's just like the white never lines up. Like the white of the sticker is always like a true white and then the white of the brick almost looks off white. But I digress. I still really like this set. Look at how cute she looks. She's standing on a Privet Drive sign and then we get a trunk. The trunk itself was just a really cute little build. This lock here in the front is a printed part. As I mentioned already, you get this History of Magic book, but it's not really a book the way that you normally get like the ones that fold open. It's just a brick and you can put this in here. And then you have a portrait here of Harry as an infant with his parents. I think this is a really cute addition. Lastly, you get this, I believe it's like a broom case. Is this a broom case or a wand case? Now I'm confused. You stick your broom in a trunk, right? Not a wand, because why would the wand be like the whole size of the trunk? So you build a container and then you build the broom. Let's figure out in the description if this is a broom or a wand. It's not a wand, there's no way, because that would be such a weird looking wand. Buildable trunk containing a portrait of Harry Potter and his parents, a stream magic book element, and a brick built wand in its case? What? How is this a wand? This wand is twice as long as the history of magic book. <laughs> Just, I'm completely, I refuse to believe that it's a wand. In my head canon, this is a broom. Wow, did I just, like, I feel like 
<laughs> I've been living in ignorance for days. Moving on from the trunk of disappointment, this Hedwig is actually removable. There are these clips on the sign that clip onto his hooves. Hedwig is pretty poseable, like tail goes up and down. The wings are on these rotators and head, you can also move it around. Overall, I just, I think this is a really cute little poseable build. I love the ability to pose him. Why do I keep saying him? I love the ability to pose her with her wings down. I look at how precious she looks. But honestly, it's, it's just what it is. It's a cute little owl build. For $20, I honestly kind of wish this was a $15 set, but I mean, I still bought it because I really wanted it. Okay, I really needed some coffee. Up next, we have the Forbidden Forest Magical Creatures Lego set. This is one that was gifted me by the Lego group. It's 172 pieces and it's $29.99. I was like rather disappointed by the selection. So let's get into it. Let's look at our minifigure and creature selection. First, we have Hermione Granger, younger Hermione. She has a skirt piece and a second face. Ronald Weasley here, same Ronald Weasley we see all the time, his second face print. They actually have him holding a lantern. And what I love is that in the lantern instead of including your run-of-the-mill trans yellow piece inside the lantern they included one of those glow-in-the-dark parts next up we have a bat i don't understand what's so cool or magical about it like this bat has appeared in 116 sets before like it's not that special i don't even remember anything in harry potter ever alluding to bats here we have a new cornish pixie that's winking it's really pretty trans blue i kind of wish i just had another cornish pixie instead of like this bat a spider that glows in the dark i think it looks really freaking cool this glow in the dark spider is also not new it has appeared in 80 sets before then we have a thestral this thestral looks super cool and he is not new we see the same thestral in the hogwarts character and Thestral set. Then we have this hippogriff. Looks really gorgeous. The eye printing and then the printing of like the feather detail on his face. Apparently this hippogriff is supposed to be Buckbeak. I thought Buckbeak was supposed to be gray. Either way, it just looks amazing. This is an amazing one. I do wish, however, that like the legs moved, but it is cool that you can make him bow. We previously saw this in Hogwarts Courtyard, Sirius's Rescue. Oh, they also included like a chicken leg for Buckbeak to eat, I guess. So let's look at this whole little display now. Right off the bat, the first thing that I love about it, actually other than the colors, is the customizability. I actually really enjoy clipping it all together into this circle, but the way it's displayed in the box is sort of like in a row, so it can make for a really cool backdrop. You get four full circles and then a half circle in the middle, but I think it's supposed to be like some kind of water, like a puddle, maybe a little pond. I love the colors here with those trans cloudy blue-ish round tiles. All of these, correct me if I'm wrong, I think they're supposed to be mushrooms. They have these glow-in-the-dark pieces in the top, which are really cool. I I think, I don't know, the, the main vibes I get from this, even though it's such a small set, is mystical. And I think the colors are part of what really helped drive that mystical feeling home, right? Dark green, and then you have dark blues, dark purple. Then you like contrast it with these light blues and these glow in the darks. It just like looks so pretty. There are open studs and jumper plates throughout this little setup if you wanted to customize how you want to display everything. You can remove these circles and half circle, place them in a different order. Like I said, I like the idea of having it as a backdrop to something. Now I'm bringing out Hagrid's Hut, An Unexpected Visit. This also released on March 1st. The designer said that because they were being developed alongside each other, there are these clips next to Hagrid's Hut. One of them has the tree trunk that Draco is standing on. And if you notice, it is the exact same kinds of clips that are on this Forbidden Forest set. You can detach this little pumpkin patch and Draco's tree trunk and attach the Forbidden Forest next to Hagrid's Hut which is really cool, right? I do feel like the colors don't quite vibe. This is very green and natureful, and this is very mystical and blue and purple, you know, all of the magical things. I almost wish there were clips in the backside, which are very easy to add if we wanted to, so that we can achieve that look, like I said, like I like the idea of having it as a backdrop in a line rather than it being clipped to the front of Hagrid's hut. I do think it's really cool, but like I said, personally, not something that I think I would have picked up because once I saw the lineup of magical creatures, I was a bit disappointed in the lineup for the price. And I do understand that the price at $30 is meant to make up for these large parts for the tree and the buck beak, as well as the Thestral, probably also the glow in the dark pieces. I don't know, I didn't go brick link any of these parts, but I know that it's making up for some of those pieces. I definitely can see this head going on sale. And honestly, when it does, I'm probably gonna grab more. We're in the home stretch now, guys. Next up, we have the Hogwarts Castle Boathouse. This Lego set is 350 pieces and retails for $37.99 USD. This was probably my least favorite set in this entire release. I wasn't going to buy this, but when I went out for release day and I was already getting Privet Drive and the Brickheads, I was like, 
I might as well pick it up. But I'll tell you what, no regrets, because I actually really like how this Lego set looks. So this set is going to be part of a series of sets that is going to all connect to make a gigantic Hogwarts castle. This one and the Owlery are the first two in the new series. The previous series of all of these sets with the green roofs, I wasn't a fan of them, so I never really collected those. Now we're going to get to recreate another gigantic castle, but this time with gray roofs. I'm also interested to see just like how it's gonna be different. It comes with five minifigures, a Professor Minerva McGonagall. Now this is a new Professor McGonagall minifigure. I think the printing on her dress looks so freaking beautiful. This is splendid. And she even gets arm detail printing. I cannot believe they went so all out on this Professor McGonagall. Here is her second face print that is a little more stern looking and they have her holding this printed tile of the students' names, Hermione, Neville, Dean, and Harry. Harry Potter with short legs, and here is his second face printing. I guess this Harry Potter is also new, even though he literally looks like a bunch of other Harry Potters that we've seen already. Hermione, this Hermione Granger that we see in this set has only appeared in one other set, which was a 2022 Hogwarts Express Collector's Edition. Here is her second face printing. Neville Longbottom, who is also exclusive to this set. Here is his second face print. And then Dean Thomas is also new, at least this version of Dean Thomas without his Hogwarts house robes too. That rounds out the students. The build comes with two little boats. I think they look really cute. They use these black sausage pieces to make the lamps. I think it's really cool that you can fit the boats inside the boathouse. On the boathouse itself, you get this little compartment under here where you can slide the rock out and you actually find Neville's toad Trevor hiding underneath it. You know how Neville is always looking for Trevor? On top of that little hidey spot, you see Hedwig. A lot of cute details going on in this super tiny build. It was kind of surprising. My biggest pain point, the building of this arch right here, I feel like just pressing bricks down together, the arch just kept coming apart in my hands. But clearly I got over that hurdle. And as I said, was actually quite impressed with the final look of this build. It looks really cute. You will find a little hidden surprise at the top of the boathouse. And if you slide it out, you can get one of the 14 new collectible tiles. Hagrid's hut had two, the boathouse has one, and the Owlery has one. So I already have four out of 14. If you look really closely, you can actually see that portrait peeping out of the top of the boathouse. One thing I wanna add in the instruction booklets, you get to see in the back, like sort of a blurry version of the Hogwarts castle. And then on the left side, you see the boathouse. And on the right side, you see the Owlery. And the instruction booklets also show you all the 14 portraits that you can collect from these sets. We have made it to the Hogwarts Castle Owlery. This Hogwarts Castle Owlery is 364 pieces and retails for $44.99. I keep seeing that sets were like my least favorite in the wave, but this was one of them too. <laughs> So I'm not the biggest fan of sets that, I don't know, like look super skeletal like this, but obviously we know that this is going to somehow connect to a larger piece, right? We don't know what the end result is gonna look like. This is a set I did get from the Lego group as part of the Lego Ambassador Network. It comes with three minifigures, Harry Potter with his brown jacket over a gray hoodie. He also has like the longer hair. This is from the Goblet of Fire where he just, his hair exploded. Cho Chang wearing a blue skirt over dark blue jeans, pink and blue striped shirt with a green hoodie jacket over it and then a blue scarf. The hair is not accurate to the film. In the film she has like a half updo, but I think for these purposes it works and I think she looks great. This is her second face printing. I really do wonder why they gave them short legs because I feel like at least by Goblet of Fire they should have the longer legs, right? We also get, of course, our favorite housekeep. What is it that Filch does? Here's Argus Filch and they have him holding a broom. He gets a second face print as well. Now this is an owlery, so of course we get some owls. This white snowy owl I assume is Hedwig. We have a brown barn owl, a red owl. We get this teeny, teeny little cute baby owl. I think he's adorable and I wonder if this is supposed to be Pig, you know, Pig Widgeon, the owl that Ron gets from Sirius as a gift. And then I asked myself, was that ever actually addressed in the movies that Ron gets Pig from Sirius? Actually, is Pig in the movies? And then we get a brown owl way up top here. So all in all, that's five owls and we actually kind of get a sixth owl. This is supposed to be a statue. In case you didn't know you were in the owlery, there's a big owl statue to remind you that this is an owlery. I think this is such a detailed set even for how skeletal it is. One thing I'm a big fan of is these textures up here. Like it is very much accurate to the film scene. I love all of these like double jumper plates on the windowsills so that the owls can just perch on them. Oh, and there's even like a hidden rat down here. This was a really great feature. This like rotating like owl supply. There's the baby owl perched and then you get like a water bowl, I assume, a cookie and probably my favorite printed part ever. I Ilops premium owl treats from I 
Cyclops Owl Emporium. And then you kind of see some random letters scattered throughout the floors. And at the very top with our brown barn owl, you see one of the 14 collectible tiles. A really fun detail, I'm gonna have to flash a picture. When you're building up the ceiling slash roof of the first floor, it's actually looks like an owl down there. And it's just meant to be an Easter egg, obviously, because it's not something that you can see. There you have it, these five Lego sets, roughly $148 USD total. Seeing all of these in front of me, I don't know exactly that I would say that this is $150 of Lego. As far as the two smaller sets go, so Four Privet Drive and the Flying Fort Anglia, I think I definitely recommend those, even though that Four Privet Drive Hedwig is $20 and I feel like should be $15. But the other three, the Boathouse, the Forbidden Forest Magical Creatures, and the Owlery, I just don't think they pass the price vibe check if that makes sense. I'm curious to know what you guys think about these Lego sets. If you've made it this far, please hit that thumbs up button. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you here.